I love it. I love it. I love it. Goodness. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Cheryl came over and said, I, I saw the Lord put his finger in your navel and loose a lightning rod, a lightning bolt. And I thought, well, I, I, better, I better stir that up some way. <laughs> and I think you, what you saw was what he's doing in the, womb, the very womb of this, of this nation here. There's something happening. Just think if what you just did got caught all the way across the 13th colony. That's amazing. Now. for healing in your body. So love it. Light therapy. I love it. I love it. You know, I've, I've gone through things, and I keep going through things, but I keep going. And that's the key. And, and it's the body of Christ. You have so much powerful energy that, you know, I, I think that's my life is to be able to be in with the body and allow that spiritual force that you carry to energize and move me forward. So I, I really thank God for each one of you and what he's doing. You know, it's also a blessing to see those who have gone before us, gone with us, and gone on. And they're in that great cloud of witnesses, and they're, they're shouting louder than we're shouting. So... And they're trying to shout us on end to what we need to be. Now, if, if there was a passage that I will refer to, it's 2 Chronicles 20. So uh, why don't you turn there? It's, it's something the Lord is really showing me for this area that is of great importance for us. And we'll find the principle uh, here in 2 Chronicles 20. Now... What I want to do is bring us all up to speed with where we are and how we've gotten to here. And most of you are the leaders that will carry on and keep stirring up the remnant, and keep gathering the remnant. And uh, you, you want to know this is where we've gotten to. Uh, you know, God's not in time. We're in time. And yet we have a generation we're responsible for. I love what was said about if we don't shout, that next generation, I have faith they're going to rise up and, sh and shout. You know, I, I have been through my own uh, warring for my own family. You know, when you travel 40 straight years, you, most of you would have the understanding you have to give your family up. I mean, it's just really that simple because being gone... 25 out of 30 days of the year, you know, you just can't run back into the house and start setting order. So, Pam, I, I honor greatly for running our house and for all that she uh, has accomplished. But, you know, my kids, they, we have great relationships, but they were kids, and surely all of you can relate to that statement. And, uh, and one thing I've seen the last three years are my kids, my children, coming to the Lord themselves and not just having to walk in my faith or Pam's faith. And it's been a real blessing watching it. You know, they've got their own uh, way of standing and their own way of thinking and uh, I, I have watched the Lord restore our war, un war unit. I mean, uh, because, you know, it's you are an individual war unit. Then your family would be the next war unit. And uh, remember, he sets the solitaire in a family. So we're never alone. He'll, he'll find the place you fit in. And, uh, and, I've watched the Lord restore my war unit, our family war unit, and it's been, it's been very good to watch that. And then we find our 
corporate war unit. And this represents a territorial war unit. And then we have to move from this war unit to the next generational war unit. And I, I really think we're on that path to do that. So um, it's amazing. Yet our nation is not in its best place that it's ever been before. But, but God. Everybody say, but God. Now. Here's, here's been what I have looked at for the last three years. In the midst of chaos, you've got to still find your promise and know that that promise is filled with prosperity. If you ever forget that, that's where your faith is going to ebb. It doesn't matter what the chaos is that's surrounding us. And because the very first chapter of Genesis, he looked at the chaos and he spoke. And really, that's what this whole season is about, us speaking into the chaos around us. So that becomes very important. Now, here's the second thing that you want to remember. There is a war over who's going to rule your harvest field. So the thing you want to uh, always think, now I've got a harvest field. And I'm responsible to harvest that field. But there is a war over the rulership of this field. See, Paul talks about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 where he's talking about the field he's been given, the sphere he's been given. He has to let his apostolic rule rise up in that sphere. Now, when I look at this, I want you to, uh, and you can glance back, some of you sitting up front, think of all these spheres that are overlapping in this room and the territory that it encompasses. Well, that's, that makes up quite a harvest for us. And I've, I've been teaching on harvest for the last three years, and I, I don't want to just teach on it, but I want you to understand we are in a harvest season. And really, in the midst of this harvest season, we are in an era of war. An era is a new historical era. Now, this is why it applies up here more than probably anywhere else in America. In this era, God is rewriting history. Now, he, he's not getting rid of the history we've had. But you have to understand, in every new era, there is a history being rewritten. And uh, that, what you ha know as the history of this nation now is being included in the history that's being written. Well, that's where the kingdom comes in. That was what the decree was about our kids and our children. How are we going to see the history written for the next generation? Because it's changing. And this era is about a historical shift. You can't just keep going back to the Revolutionary War because we're not there anymore. Even though what changed the course and birthed a nation now has to happen again in this era. Now, that's, that's the way you have to think. But we're dealing with other elements in the atmosphere than we have ever dealt with before. They didn't have the same elements in the atmosphere back in the revolutionary time, and we are having to learn to process those elements. Now, why this movement is so important, this era is of a new Holy Spirit movement. Well, now, you heard Peter say, you have George Whit Whitfield, you have the Fulton Revival, you have all sorts of uh, the Wesleys affected this area. You have a great heritage in this era of spirit transformation, especially New York, Jody. I probably spent more time going all the way from Buffalo down to New York City because there is such a heritage of spirit transformation in this area. 
But again, it is not the same era we lived in. So you can't go back to that type of revival that occurred during that time, but you pull what the DNA of that into where we are today. It will have the component of that in its DNA up here. Whitfield, there was a component of repentance that, was, that will uh, actually increase in this era. And as we understand that, we move forward. But then you also think up here you had Woodstock in New York. It changed the course of America. Well, but it changed the course of America. I went with the music that came from it. And you have to understand you have that much influence on America. America was forever changed from Woodstock. And a, a generation was changed. But out of that generation came the Jesus movement. And, and so, see, God, I, I, Peter, I, I don't think God just looks at all that uh, degradation that was in that. I think he says, okay, now how am I going to use this today? How am I going to take that? And how am I going to awaken the passion that's misplaced in it and bring it into today? So there is something up here that has great passion that America is needing today. 